bigger issue is the media. Because the media was prepared to talk about this issue, the information got out to Singaporeans, right? But what I'm saying is that we have to be very careful. Don't let the media use us again just to focus on the NKF because this, the matter is not just the NKF. We issued a, friend, uh, a statement a few days ago saying that the NKF is really a chip of the old block, like father, like son, right? The father, all right, is a system that we have here in Singapore, the GIC, if you want to be more precise. And if you do a com comparison between the two, you will see the similarity. We posted up some internet person has done this, this comparison between the two, the PAP and the NKF. Somebody sent it to us. I thought it was very well thought through. We posted it. A few things that it mentioned. Right? You have these huge, huge reserves going on. And then the leaders of these organizations say, we have to be paid so much money because we are so good. And then they don't account for all their funds, how they use them. Right. Let me give you a few examples. A few years ago, I remember reading, and I had written about this in my book. This guy was an, is an associate professor at NUS. Whether he's still there or not, the opposition leaders of parties, all right, said, there is no transparency, and he is referring to the GIC. There is no transparency of public accountability concerning. Don't give the public a precise accounting of how it uses the public money. This is the situation that we're in. And I'm not talking about GIC, CPF, where you voluntarily contribute, donate the money. This is your wages, your savings that you're going to have to depend on when you retire. Many Singaporeans still don't know this but our CPF is in crisis, whether you like it or not. Most Singaporeans, when you retire in about five years' time, will not have enough CPF to tide you through 20 years of retirement. And then you ask the government, where is the money? Where is the money that the CPF funds go into the GIC that the GIC then uses for investments abroad? We don't make that public. And it's your money. So I'm trying to draw this matter and look at it from the perspective of what's happening right now with the NKF. If the people, if you right now listening to this are so outraged by the matter at NKF, you must, you must be having nightmares about what's happening to your CPF fund. And I can tell you, that if anything were to happen to our reserves, believe me, don't have this dream that somehow, okay, we'll make enough hue and cry at that time and then we'll be, be able to recover the money. Once it's gone, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to see it again. That is why we have been saying, the Singapore Democratic Party has been saying, we hear your problems about the CPF, we hear your problems about jobs, we hear your problems about the foreign talent taking away your job, the high cost of living, the stress that you're going to. But let me tell you one thing. Without any kind of your fundamental freedoms of speech, association, assembly, you can never, believe me, you can never hold this government accountable. You can never then bring this government to the negotiation table and say, look, this is a problem. We need to sort this out anywhere else. And let's not go too far. Let's even talk about even Malaysia. You'll find the people will be gathering outside NKF office and demanding a full account. You're not going to get it here. And if you can remember what, mind you, he was the founding chairman of the PAP. I think at that time, correct me if I'm wrong, he was the first Deputy Prime Minister. You cannot have a more serious indictment of the system here. 
You know what he said? He said, I don't believe the statistics put up by the government. The man in the street doesn't know whether he's on thin ice or solid rock. After the Tadli Bank in Indonesia is having a lot of problems, correct? Do you know what happened after that? Just for your information, Tadli Bank at that time was a private bank, okay? They had loan exposures in Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, South Korea amounting to what? 1.16 billion dollars. Billion. Okay? What happened? Capital Bank came in. But members of this country that when we have these funds in public that we have the absolute right to demand from the government that they tell us after all the angst after all the cursing at, at those officials, at the end, what does it boil down to? Nothing. Right? Let's move on. Seems to be the, the, the favorite phrase, phrase today. And then everything is back to normal again. What I'm trying to tell you and what we've been trying to tell our young Singaporeans through the past few months is that we must empower ourselves to be able to take action to demand transparency to demand accountability from the government because if we don't the government is just going to uh, let them gather at speaker's corner they're going to say a few words and after that everybody will go home what are they going to do about it okay We're asking you to come together because it's only through unity, it's only by standing together that we can be strong and that we can begin to demand answers from the government, the PAP. What are we going to do when we come together? Let me tell you this. If each of you here today is willing to come out and say, look, I will spread the news to five people, how many people are going to be able to gather, correct? And so that when we call for action, we would have ready channels for people to spread the news. Because I can tell you, the media, the national media is not going to report on any of this. At least the preparation for whatever action we want to talk about. Hey. And this is why I continue to advocate non-violent action in Singapore. What is non-violent action? Non-violent action is when, for example, you take, you want to sign a petition, correct? That's non-violent action. Peaceful means of telling the government that no, I don't agree with you, I want something to be done because I am a citizen of this country and I have a right to campaign for those actions. Okay? Now, I'm just talking about one form of action, signing a petition. The government has signed many petitions and they have not given a hoot about what you said. The biggest example is what? The casino, isn't it? They've got this whole grand scheme of having a casino and then they come out with this Wayam. We have to debate. Right? And then a decision is, was made. And whether Singaporeans agree with not, it or not, not, didn't care. Singaporeans wanted to have a protest. JB Jayaratnam wanted to organize a protest. March? No. Okay. But this is where we come in as activists, people who are concerned about the future of our country. Non-violent action tells us that we need to take peaceful civil action 
to compel the government to listen to us. This has been done many, many times in very different countries, all over the world. I won't go too far again to other regions, because you're going to say, oh, culturally, they're, diff they're very different. I'm going to limit myself to just Asia. And believe me, you know about Nelson Mandela, you know about Martin Luther King, you know about the Mahatma Gandhi. But I'm going to limit myself to East Asia, right? Whether it's Korea, whether it's Taiwan, whether it's Indonesia, Malaysia, even Hong Kong, people are saying, look, we have the right to gather together to stage a peaceful protest. I keep emphasizing on the word peaceful because that's where the word non-violent comes from. Okay? Under the Constitution, which the government has even signed, to the Declaration of Human Rights and the United Nations. We have the right to be able to gather not just at Speaker's Corner, okay, but even outside Parliament to demand action from the government, to demand that the government responds to our voices, our questions. And this is where I'm hoping that all of you I know that many of you here are visiting our website and you know more or less about what we're talking about when we talk about non-violence. Come. Come, learn more about it. I've done it. Talk about freedom of speech when I made that speech in Raffles Place. And at that time the government said no. But we must not let the government continue to tell us what is right and wrong. Because at the end of the day, these laws are all put in place to support, to make sure that the government supports itself and to make sure it suppresses on citizens' voices like yours. Right. What we have done was brought up just a few sheets, uh, a few of our, our uh, registration forms for DSDP. Come, step forward. What? Say that you want to be part of something that's positive. To take concrete, positive, proactive action rather than just going on the internet and just being anonymously identified openly. Okay? The more you fear the government, the more the government will try to bully and intimidate you. Stand up. Stand up. Because this is your country. The money in GIC is your money. The savings in CPF are your savings. And if you care about yourselves and your family, you will be happy to come out and say, I want to be counted, I want to be part of this whole movement. Get in touch with us. If you don't have access to the internet, we have forms here, sign up. If you don't, if you prefer to do it through the internet, come. Because I can tell you the 40 or 50 of you here, maybe even more than that, gathered here together. If we begin to organize ourselves, mobilize ourselves, you can be sure that you will create international news and that people will begin to see, yes, there are Singaporeans that are willing to take positive action to hold this government accountable. This is what we need. So don't walk away today again thinking that this was just another speech that I've heard. Come, make your commitment. We will be in touch with you. Leave with us your, your contact so that when we call and in a big, on a bigger picture, with the GIC, CPF, so on and so forth, demanding transparency and accountability from the government. So please sign up with us, give your contact to us so that when we get together again, you all will be here. All right, thank you very much. Thank you all for your attention. following which then I'll ask uh, Chi Xiong Shen to come out and 
make a couple more announcements. All right? Anybody? Good evening, everyone. My name is Chi Seok Chen, and I'm a CEC of the uh, CC member of the SDP. When news broke about this NKF and that SBH saga early on last week, the first thought that crossed my mind was that how did it break? How is it that we got to know about it? Very simple. It was because SPH, Straits Times, let the people know about it. It's because the SPH, Straits Times, Media Corp decides what to let the people know. They decide, which is symptomatic of the government as well, what the people should read, how the people should think. They also decide what you should do with your CPF money. They decide where we can gather to talk. Basically, the government does all the deciding for Singaporeans.